This is Flowers on the Stage. It gets easier, you know, and, and it, not everything is the end of the world. Not everything is this this big thing that you make it out to be. Slow it down. You know, you don't have to do everything. Um, and the more you try to do, the less you're going to actually be in the moment. And I think that's a a big lesson I've learned recently is that I don't need to go to every show. I don't need to be everywhere. I can just, you know, spend time with my family and be selective of how I spend my time and really focus on being present in those moments. How else do you feel like being a dad has made you different? Being a dad, that's, I mean, that's, that's changed my whole world. It's, it's being able to kind of serve something else that's not you, you know, just you're, you spend the rest of your life once you have kids, in my opinion, in service of something. And I think we as human beings function greatest when we kind of come out of this um, selfish nature that we're all prone to and start kind of focusing on serving or helping other people and the most direct the, the, the most direct way to do that for me is to focus on my kid. I'd love to hear like the sticking points that you're you're most trying to follow in parenting. Um, you know, being empathetic to, you know, my kid is crying over something that I perceive as this small thing. He's not getting the 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 red jelly beans, the the blue jelly bean. But I try to look at it, things from more of his perspective and being you know, oh, wow, like you're having some really big feelings right now. And it must be tough to be in that position, not be able to express your thoughts and, you know, your exact preferences. And we're just trying to guess it here and coming from a place of um, just a lot of empathy um, is important to me. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of when adults kind of mock kids for their, you know, tantrums or things that are doing that might not make sense to them um so it's it's important for me to kind of just always be empathetic to his experience and what he's going through um because it's everything's new and different for him and it's probably very confusing and i mean it's confusing for me now at you know 36 years old so i can't even imagine at one one and a half what what life is like you know wild to think about and it's it's really cool it's it's cool to watch you know your what nothing makes time go by quicker than watching your kid grow up more and more each day i feel like that for me is what's kind of made the world start spinning a lot faster and you know because of that i'm trying to be more present you know because it's like hold on you're like trying to hold on to these amazing moments in your life and you're watching them just pass in front of you really fast um, over and over and it, it's it's tough so you you don't want to you don't want to you know you miss i i love my kid now but i miss when he was a baby you know and then i but at every phase you start to miss you know something that you missed prior to that so i'm trying to be as present as possible so in addition to empathy What's most important also for you to well, I think it's, role model for, for? I think well, just role modeling in itself, right? Like I, I, you kids don't do what you say; they do what you do. You know, so I'm pretty, you know, I'm I'm pretty focused on making sure that we set a good example, and by setting a good example, doing the things. that I think, or we think, me, me and my wife, you know, uh, or live in a way that we'd want to see our kids live as well. You know, we focus on health, we focus on a lot of self-care, we focus on, you know, 
going to the gym, eating healthy. We, we try to embody all the things that we kind of preach. And, you know, I'm not really totally at that phase yet of parenting. Um, you know, my kid's still a toddler and, you know, we're, we're, we're still struggling to connect on, you know, why he needs to do certain things. And it, it's, you know, it's confusing for him at the moment, but um, I can't really like explain to a toddler, you know, the benefits of meditation or, you know, or working out or whatever, but we'll take him and we'll go play outside and we'll, you know, um, spend the day running around and we'll wake up at, we, we wake him up at seven and We take him out in the sun and get some morning sunlight to start his day and start his clock and his his rhythm and you know we 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 just try to embody a lot of what we would like to see. Um, you know, it's funny we wrote these vows to our kid um, instead of a bris, which is what they do for um, Jewish kids. My wife is Jewish. Uh, we did that in the hospital. We the medical part and sorry if it's too TMI but so instead in in uh in person we instead for the in-person ceremony we did you know a set of vows to our kid and one of them was that well I'll never say to you you know I am the way that I am um so one of the things that we try to embody is that we're always trying to work towards something whether it's physically mentally emotionally, spiritually, we're always working on ourselves in some way, you know, me and my wife meditate every day. We both work out almost every day. Um, we, I personally, I, I have a gratitude practice that I do every day where I'm trying to switch my brain from picking apart everything that's wrong and trying to train the brain to start looking for what's right. So I make sure I don't I, I try to do five things a day and I don't repeat ever. I try not to repeat them. So I'm picking the most mundane, minuscule things. You know, today I was grateful for air filters because it was, you know, smoky outside, you know. And, well, I had my book here. What else is, you know, I was grateful for my kid going on the trampoline for the first time. And it just, I try to find these minuscule things Because my friend who kind of showed me this practice was like, it's not about the actual things that you're grateful for. It's a, the practice is the search, Tra training your mind and your brain to look for what's right in life. So, yeah, for, for me, it's, you know, I want to role model um, how to be. But I also, I mostly want to role model the fact that we're always works of progress and we're always working on ourselves and that's important. I don't care, you know, where anybody is in life. The people that I'm excited to talk to all the time are the people that are like working on something and I'm working on so many things, you know, just in the self care, self health, health, health department. So like if somebody wants to talk to me about meditation, if somebody wants to talk to me about healthy eating, if they want to talk to me about exercise, like, I'm all about it, you know, if you want to talk to me about therapy, you know, like, yeah, I, I, I really appreciate talking to people who are working on themselves. I think one of the things we said in our vows is, I'll never say that I am the way that I am, you know, like, I, I hate that when people are like, eh, well, this is how I am. It's like, no, just we, we're, we're all trying to be better or some of us are trying to be better every day. And I, and those are the people that I really loved connecting with. And it's like, you can be better yeah. also. And you slip, you know, it's not, it's not a upward trajectory. It's, it's like this, you know, you go up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, and it's, it's fun. You know, it's, it's cool. It's, it's cool for me to look back. I've been sober for five years. It's, it's fun for me to kind of, well, it's not always fun for me to look back at what I was like five years ago or see pictures <laughs> from seven, eight years ago or faces, you know, you could tell you know, it's, it's like almost sick in the face and way heavier. And, um, you can even see like a sadness, 
to that, right? But to, the fun part is seeing where you're at now and knowing that like your life is completely different because you took those incremental steps every single day, which in the moment did not feel like you were making much progress. But then all of a sudden, one day you look back and it's five years later and you're like, wow, that I've come a long way. And it's for me personally, it's very hard. I, 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 it's hard for me to realize that in the moment. In the moment, it always feels a little bit harder than it should be. It feels like I'm not, I'm not getting to where I want to be. I set my expectations pretty high. And, you know, I do like looking back and being like, oh, wow, it actually has been a complete 180, you know, because I keep moving the goalposts. So I, I, it always feels like I'm just trudging along. But, uh, you know, it's it's nice to know that, you know, when you look back, you can make a, a lot of progress over not that long. Yeah, a thousand percent. That felt fulfillment, like looking back, like we all we all will inevitably be looking back on our lives and and i think one one huge thing is like not feeling like we wasted opportunities and then all on the other hand like you're saying like feeling fulfillment from knowing hey whatever whatever the result was was that but you know i one percent better every day i did did my best and just like i feel like no matter what happens looking back and knowing you have that attitude is like essential I agree. So jump in, jump into the side a little bit from from fatherhood, but somewhat related. I would love to hear what what you think is most important when it comes to being a great leader. Oh, um, being a good leader. I think being a good leader really has to do with trusting your team. You know, um, your a leader is only as good as the people that he leads in business and life, you know, um, whether it's leading a family, leading a company, um, it's, it's tough. It's, it, it's, it's a lot of pressure that can be put on to a person. I know you, I used to struggle with this a lot and it's so easy to take that pre pressure and project it on the people that are there helping you. And I've, found you know and I, in my late early 20s and late 20s it was i i was doing a lot of that you know and and it's it's easy to have those type of toxic behaviors come out because you feel just this pressure to achieve something and you can project that pressure onto the people that you work with nowadays i feel like i no longer not that i no longer feel the pressure it's that I no longer project that pressure onto my team or the people that I work with. And instead, I try to go to them to help relieve some of that pressure. You know, it's, it, I try to be more honest and upfront about, um, I think a good leader is honest and upfront with his team about expectations, goals, um, where they're at for me, where my company's at, what we need to move forward, what are our benchmarks, what what are our goals for each month, um, things like that. I feel like are are very important. But trusting the people around you that you're literally paying to help you um, is is key, you know, and, and um, making sure you're motivating them to want to help you achieve that goal this is flowers on the stage a podcast about being creative and finding success to support it please check out our sponsors new belgium brewing and Thrax cbd and now back to the episode what have you learned is most important through navigating out of like through and out of a situation where life just feels very gray. I have tools in my tool belt that I, I use for those things. Um, and I, you know, I, I meditate every morning. Um, I work out 
I make sure I try to get, you know, five, 10 minutes of sunlight in my eyes before 8 a.m., 7.30 a.m. Um, I, ha I have my gratitude practice. I do all of these things. I cold plunge in the mornings, but it's still very hard. You know, life is always going to get you pretty gray. And I actually, you know, recently, this, this week even, um, I had a pretty low low. And what I forgot was sometimes when you have those lows, you think it's always like that, you know, and you've always been in this place. And sometimes it's good to remind yourself that this is, this is just a low and it's going to swing back up and it's not forever. This is a temporary feeling and you've had these before, you'll have them again. But noticing the feelings and not completely identifying with them and just realizing it's something that the mind and body is going to do from time to time. It's going to bring you to this dark, depressing place. And it's not, it's not always real. And it's not always, not that it's not always real. It's not always forever, you know, even though in the moment it feels like it's going to be forever and it is temporary. And, you know, they say all things, pass, you know, and it's especially true for those states, you know, and I think a lot of people who dig themselves deeper start to think that it's never going to get better. It's never going to be, you're never going to get out of this cloud. I've always been in this cloud and it, it can get pretty, you know, it's cyclical and you, you kind of push yourself deeper and deeper and, and, and into deeper and darker places. And it's just important to remember that it's just a moment in time and it's a very human feeling that you're having. You're not alone. Every single person on this planet has experienced what you're experiencing right now in this moment, this moment uh, that, that you're, that you're feeling a little bit gray or dark or depressed. It is one of it is the most, one of the most common feelings known to man. So you're not in it alone. And it's important to talk, and, you know, for me, it's important to talk about this stuff with friends. You know, I'm way past the age of not having real conversations with the people in my life about what's actually going on. I'm not too interested in the surface level conversations about what this person's doing or that person's doing, or did you hear? Um, it's like, I really want to connect with people on a, on a more meaningful and deeper level and kind of just really be honest and communicate what, you know, the experiences that I'm having, talk to them about the experiences they're having and seeing if there's some, you know, what we can take from each one of those experiences and, and learn from it, you know, um, learning from your own experiences is, is tough and you know it's it's we learn a lot from the things that we go through but man it would be a lot easier if we could just learn from other experience other people's experiences too you know and, and sometimes you can so sometimes it's good to talk it out and sometimes it's good just to talk it out so you can realize that this is not a feeling that's exclusive to you that is happening right now. yeah and it's and not talking about it makes it hard to to feel that way like Isolated. like we're connected through that feeling yeah 100 percent. i'm curious what you've learned from sobriety and kind of what your takeaways have been from from experiencing it <laughs> um sobriety it's 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 a funny thing right there's in the first year or two or three, it's like you, you, you're hit with this incredible FOMO, right? It's just like, and you put a lot of pressure on yourself um, for not being able to do this thing that everybody else is doing. And it's, it's hard, you go out, you go to shows, you go to, you know, life events of people. And especially in the beginning, especially when I first got sober, I feel like there's been a shift since COVID, like a huge shift um, in the, you know, in, where people are focusing more on their health and 
uh, so many of the people that I know and that are in my life have now moved towards either less alcohol or no alcohol. But earlier on, um, it was tough. It was it was really tough just going to the places that I, you know, would frequent. And I always felt like I was missing out on something. I was missing the ingredient that made the thing that I was doing enjoyable. And it, it took me a little bit, a little bit of time to connect back with the music um, a little bit because every time I went to a show or a concert, it felt like I was, I don't know, I, I just felt like I was missing out on this thing that everyone was doing that was helping them enjoy being where they were. Um, so in the beginning, it was definitely hard. Um, but it kind of, you start learn your body and your mind start learning what it means to feel good. And then that becomes its own addiction, right? It's like, you're like, oh, wow. Like when I, when I wake up at, in the mornings now, I don't feel ashamed or crappy or hungover or um, depressed or, you know, all these feelings that a, a night out partying can, can have. Uh, on the body um, so that starts to go away and you start to really appreciate feeling good and you start doing things that kind of and I started doing things that kind of um, expanded that feeling of feeling good and then I don't know one day it kind of just it kind of fades it faded for me this feeling that I wasn't able to enjoy the things that other people were enjoying and I realized, A, that nobody cares. You know, I, I, I first, I, you, at the beginning, you think all eyes are on you. And like, everyone's, everyone's like, oh man, why isn't that guy drinking? And you just think all of these things about that other people are thinking about you for not doing something in a space where nobody's thinking about you, especially at a show or a concert, people are focused on the band. So eventually I realized the eyes weren't on me. The, the eyes were on stage. Um, and then eventually I was able to put my focus and my attention back onto the stage and kind of appreciate what was happening there, but with a different mindset. I didn't need to get lost in the music. Maybe my the highs that I have now seeing music might not be like this like you know seeing music on a ton of molly or lsd or something like that it it is a pretty fun experience right but i feel like now i connect to things on a deeper level um when i'm when i'm seeing music and live music in general so for me i, I that shift start to happen a few years in and now I just, I, I don't know, I just, I feel like I've gotten to a point where I can't imagine going back. Um, I don't, and, I, and not to judge people who, you know, do partake in whatever they want to partake in to, you know, enhance their experience and life experience. But for me, I've learned over the years that it's not an enhancement, it's a hindrance for me and it, and it actually makes it harder for me to actually connect with what's going on uh, if you're ever at a show you'll realize the people who are least focused on the show are the ones who have drank the most or have done too many drugs and you'll notice them they're the ones that are talking the most or um really just focused on other things that are going on so yeah i mean mm -hmm. that 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 shift happened for me and and you know not not only you know sobriety in going to shows but sobriety in my life has allowed me to connect in a way deeper way with the people in my life um i'm way more confident in the decisions that i make and I'm way and i might not have those crazy highs but my life is I'm way more content um, and I'll take that feeling of contentment over you know the 
four and a half minutes of, or four to, you know, four and a half hours of bliss, you know, I'll take an everlasting and a longer lasting feeling of contentment over that. What do you think future you would say to you now, if given the chance? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I think it's funny. I think, you know, every year I look back on who I was the year before and I'm like, Oh my God, that guy didn't know anything. You know, and I, and I've, I've felt that way every birthday. I'm like, it's insane how different I am today than I was a year ago. And usually I, you know, I, I can look back and like actually quantify all the things that I'm doing different year to year. So I can't even imagine what it's going to be like five years down the line or even a year down the line, because I feel like it's always changing. We're always evolving. You know, we're always work, you know, working on ourselves and I'll probably find a million things that I was doing wrong, you know, at this moment, as opposed to in five years or five years from now, five years from now, I'll probably be like, oh my God, that guy wasn't as, you know, confident or didn't have these skill sets that I do have now, you know, it's a, who knows, but I'm, I'm also interested to see, cause I'll be there one day and I'll be able to look back and look back at this interview and, and be like, holy shit, who is that guy? So if you could write one piece of advice to go into your children's pocket for the rest of their life, same piece of advice, what would it be? I don't know if it's advice, but I just want them to know that I'm, I'm always proud of them and I'll always love them no matter what they do. And the advice would just be breathe, you know, it's, I'm confident that almost all people have the ability to work through whatever issue it is that they're having, as long as they can slow it down and kind of eliminate the noise and the overthinking that's going on in their head. I think that is the biggest hindrance to us as human, as human beings is the overthinking and the, the noise. So just breathing and focusing on the breath and just slowing things down. I, I think that piece of advice is great for anybody. You know, it's just when you slow things down and you make things a little bit quieter, I think it's important. Um, I think it's one of the most important things that you can do because you, you, you have the intuition to do and to meet the moment at any given moment. Every every person I know, without a doubt, has that ability to meet the moment. But the only thing that gets in their way is themselves. It's crazy how much of a difference it makes if you're, you're just running through your day and you just keep on trucking versus how how someone's kind of like attitude and demeanor and just just the way they are the difference when you can just take a few minutes and like reset is such a game changer to just take a few minutes. Well, Hey, Kunch, this has been awesome. My man, thank you so much for, for taking the time and for taking these questions in stride. I got just a couple more for you as we're wrapping up, but man, huge shout out to you for all that you do for us music fans and really appreciate, you know, sharing uh, kind of what makes you tick here, here with us in this interview. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Pleasure's, pleasure's mine. So curious, like, is death something that you think about at all? Would you say it's something that motivates you? Like when that comes to mind, like, what is that self-talk like? Yes, uh, I definitely think about death a lot. Um, but not, I don't ruminate over the fact that it's going to happen as much as knowing that it's going to happen and what am I going to do between this moment right now and that moment when it comes.
you know, I've, I've learned, um, especially more as of late, that it's something that's going to happen to all of us, you know, and I've always known it, but it's never felt more real than now. Also, again, just watching your kid grow so fast, I could see it. I know that I'm going to close my eyes and one day he's going to be in kindergarten and the next day he's going to be in middle school. The next day it's going to be, you know, 18. And then the next day he's in his twenties and I'm going to be old. And I'm going to be knocking on death's door. You know, that it's going to happen way sooner than I think. I, I know that and I appreciate that fact. So I try to use it as a motivator instead of something that paralyzes me, you know, and, and instills a sense of fear. And I don't like to ruminate over, you know, over the fact that, that it's coming. It's coming for all of us, you know. And so I'll use it as something, as a tool to try to push myself to be more present and do the things that I'm too afraid to do and make the, take the steps that I want to take in life. Um, and, I, and I don't always, you know, I don't always do that, but I use it as a motivator to, to try to, push myself to do it more. Man, huge shout out to the mindset that you got. You're the man, dude. Really appreciate you joining me here. Really admire just kind of the way you see the world and putting your best foot forward. I mean, it's, it's pretty, I think it's pretty easy for people to know what like the, the better, the right thing to do. Like, it's not such a mystery, but it's so so much more difficult to actually put it into practice for years and to see where that takes you. And I, I respect the hell out of that seeing your, your journey and yeah, I really appreciate your willingness to link up on this with me. Yeah, absolutely, man. Well, anyone out there who listened this far, huge shout out to live for live music. Got a link to their, their website down below and yeah, keep up with everything they got going on, all their upcoming festivals, conjures we're wrapping anything in particular worth mentioning here? Um, for fun, over the last three, four months, I took a meditation teaching course. Mm. Um, I actually got linked with meditation early in the pe pandemic um, through one of my friends who helped found Backline. And Backline was the company they you know, had a program through a girl named Emily Kessler, who was teaching meditation at the time. And I did a three day and I was doing, you know, I was on some of the meditation apps and doing stuff here and there, but I did a uh, meditation course with her and other music industry folk. Um, and something really clicked for me. It was a, you know, a transcendental style meditation, a Vedic meditation style the, um, but it was a mantra based meditation that I do 20 minutes in the morning and I try to do 20 minutes again throughout the day at some point um, but it really changed my life um, it made me you know less anxious um, I, I didn't let my anxiety consume consume me I it, it, it increased my focus um, just so many different benefits that I experienced that Earlier this year, I was, you know, I was curious to you know, learn more about it. And so I reached out to my teacher, who then linked me with her teacher. And all of a sudden, I found myself in the midst of a meditation teaching course, which was wild. You know, I wasn't expect. I was expect. I was just, I thought I was just doing more and more research. Um, but then after I put my kid down to sleep at night, um, I would work on the course and listen to the lectures and take the quizzes and all that stuff. And last week I actually, or a few weeks ago, I taught my first course, which is great. And yeah, I just think it's going to be something that I do from time to time. So um, if anyone's paying attention or, or is interested, feel free to reach out. I'll probably do one of these every six to eight weeks. And, you know, I just feel like that's, the way that I can make 
an impact on the world. Um, like I said before, I think the thing that, you know, our biggest obstacle in life and most people's biggest obstacle in life are, is ourselves. Um, it's the overthinking things and, you know, we, we really seem to make things a lot harder for ourselves and create a lot more problems that don't necessarily need to be there. So I think by teaching people to kind of meditate and get around that um, and kind of push through that and move forward from there, I think, you know, I can help change the world the way that I want to change it. Man, meditation is a superpower. That is that is freaking awesome. You got any? Yeah, it's something you, that I you, teach anybody. You know, it's not what I what I liked about this style of meditation was that it was so accessible and easy to learn. You know, I've taught people who are you that they they would never they could never have seen themselves meditating before. You know, and I don't think it can be a spiritual practice, but it doesn't have to be. It's, you know, I think it's almost a therapeutic practice. So it's almost like a, instead of physical therapy, it's like a type of mental therapy. But, you know, and I, I consider it the most important meeting that I have each day with myself. Um, yeah. And I just want to share that with other people. So eventually I'll end up, you know, doing it uh, on a more consistent basis, uh, teaching it on a more consistent basis. And yeah, I figured I'd just mention that here. Yeah, if someone's interested, how can they pursue that further with you? Um, I'll probably, you know, you can follow me on socials and I'll probably um, release some course dates at some point. Cool. Well, we'll link his socials down below. And yeah, I really appreciate you putting that out and you putting out, you know, this awesome, awesome podcast. Take care, man.